So continuing with the idea of using the unifix cubes to um, develop number sense, um, I think another great activity that I like to do with some of the kids that I tutor for younger students as well as for older students who uh, still haven't developed some um, some basic number sense, developing anchors of 5 and 10. Um, what I like to have them do is I, I like to have them represent numbers in more than one way. And what I mean by that is take for example number, let's say number 6. Uh, a lot of times with younger students or students who are very uh, who aren't, who don't have this um, fluidity with numbers and be able to take them apart and put them back together, they have, they they tend to view numbers as being these very rigid blocks, and they can't develop generalizations and relationships between numbers. So, for the number six, um, they might be able to see well, it might be five plus one, but usually they just represent the value as um, that name value of six. So one thing I like to do with students is have them to explore the number six and show me many different combinations and, and variations um, that they can come up with to show me number six. And what I mean by that is they can show me one plus five, can give me the number six, two plus four, can give me the number six, three plus three, can give me the number six. Now, one thing I, I probably wouldn't do with younger kids is I wouldn't give them, ask them to, to do zero plus six. For for very young kids who are still counting, the concept of zero, um, adding zero to something, um, you know, it, it may be something that, that might throw them off. So I'll probably hold off on that for younger kids. But for older kids who understand the concept of zero, and adding zero gives you... Um, the number itself, that's fine. But for younger kids, I probably hold off on it. And uh, the, the other thing I would do is once they've come up with those combinations and, and they've manipulated using the unifix cubes and they've expressed it verbally, is what I like to do is I like to have them be creative and and to show me um, uh, what they've learned using crayon uh, and and paper. So just drawing out those different combinations, 3 plus 3, but not just the equation 3 plus 3, show me the blocks 3 plus 3 equals 6. Show me the blocks 5 plus 1 equals 6. And then um, if they're able to write down um, some of their thought process and explain to me how all these different numbers come up to, to the number 6, that's even better because they're showing you that they're building all these different connections and they're showing you that they understand that the number 6 can be can be made in a lot of different ways. And they're being very creative about it. And this is something that, um, if you're a parent, you can always hang up. Um, if you're a teacher, you can always hang up. And But for students, this is their student work, and it's something that they're very proud of. Uh, so one thing that I would also do with students is I would have them um, work on one number um, a day. So this way they're really focusing on one particular number. For some of the early numbers, maybe like 1, 2, and 3, maybe you can do on, on one day. Um, but some of the higher numbers definitely give them a little more time to practice and explore. Uh, so another number that I like to work frequently with is 5. Uh, and that's one of our anchors. Uh, and it's an important concept for kids um, to really think in terms of in terms of 5, especially when they're younger. Um, Developing the five anchors is probably um, more important, or most important, uh, when, when you're younger. So um, what we're going to do um, here is we're, we're going to have kids explore uh, the number five. Just like we did with number six, they're going to uh, come with many different combinations. And actually for the number five, what I would like for them to do is, is to show me different ways that they can do it and using more than one color. So, for example, for um, for five, they know this is five, but they can also show me that five and one is four, and they can draw that down um, using crayons, markers, be very creative about it, and uh, write it out. But I, I wouldn't have them write it out, draw it out, until they really had time to explore, come up with their ideas. Um, and then after, you know, they come with the combination, they talk about it, they verbalize it, 
there's understanding behind it, then um, have them be creative about it and explore that thought process even further using crayons and writing. So another thing would be, um, so they have four and one, well let's see, maybe they can do three and two. And they would just double check, let's see, one, two, three, and one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and three and two also give you the number five. So once they've, um, once they've, once they've worked and they've uh, worked on the five anchor, uh, worked on the number six, uh, another one that I would have them eventually get to, uh, maybe not right away. Again, again, these are things I would probably do one number at a time. Um, so this way you have a lot of time for them to really develop these um, connections between the numbers and <laughs> interchange numbers and recombine them. The next thing, um, you know, after you've done 6, 7, 8, 9, is once you get to 10, to the number 10, just change this over here. Once you get to the number 10, we're going to have them, just like we developed um, the 5 anchor, we're going to have them do something very similar with um, for the number 10. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have we're going to actually use, we're going to have kids come up with combinations to make up the number 10. Um, and what I like to do is I like to use something as a, as a reference so kids can kind of compare and see what the 10 looks like and maybe they might need a few more because a lot of times the kid might see, um, you know, like one, you know, it's hard for them to really see how many more, um, I mean, without the 10, it's hard for them to really see how many more uh, they would need to get to 10. But once they have a reference, they can kind of play with the numbers. Um, so they might say, well, I'm definitely going to need more than a 1 and a 2. And they can try the larger one. And they can see if this fits. They can put it together, compare it. And they say, well, you know what? 1 plus this number, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, gives, uh, gives me 10. And again, they would do the same thing um, for the other numbers. 2, right? and sometimes they might just play with it and kind of figure it out. Right? If, they were put, if they were put the 2 and the 9 together, right? they would look at it and you would ask them, or they would probably say, um, that doesn't look right. Or you could even question them, you know, is, are both those numbers the same? Are they both the same length? Uh, and they'll tell you, they'll, they'll most likely tell you, no, it's not. And they'll realize it right away because they can see it. And uh, another thing you can do is once they started to work with these numbers and they've had time to explore it and some of the different combinations is... Um, you can actually have them do as, as we've done before, drawing it out, writing the equations, drawing out the equations using, using the unifix cubes, being very creative about it. And then on top of that, what we can have them do is we can have them further explore it um, in later days to, as not to the combination of two numbers, but the combination of many different numbers. So uh, the number 10, they could possibly do, well, let's see, 1 plus 2 plus 3, plus 4, is that 10? Oh, it is 10. So 1 plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 equals 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And again, they can work with many different combinations. Um, are they going to, are they going to know all these, uh, all the different ways to count to 10 right away? No, but just having them experience and seeing that they can break up numbers and put them together is very important. You can work on having it, uh, having them uh, become more automatic with it with later um, lessons and activities. But just for them to get the experience that you can do that, you can manipulate that, and there are many different ways that you can do that, you know, that's a very big generalization for them to develop and important for later um, activities, lessons, and concepts.